God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Exodus 3, 
Exodus, uh, and I'm not sure you write that chapter down, but that's all right. Three through eight, whichever one you get. He said, Go silver and brass, and blue and purple and scarlet, and fine linen, and goat's hair, and ram skins, dried red, and badger skins, and ship wood, all for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for a sweet incense, onyx stones, and stones to be set in the ephod, in the breastplate of the priest, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell in. That's telling us that the Lord said, I want to dwell with men. I want to dwell in their presence. Praise the Lord. Do you ever feel the presence of the Holy Ghost in this place? Yeah. You know why? Because God desires to dwell with us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ever since he made Adam and Eve, the Bible says that he would come in the cool of the afternoon and dwell with us. And God is not pleased when we don't have a relationship or a dwelling place for God to be. And I'll tell you something else after all that I just read. Don't say one word about anybody anywhere building a beautiful church. Because you know what? God likes beauty. Praise the Lord. He told he told them in, in Malachi, he said, tell them to bring in to my house that my house would be filled. Or my house would have what it needed. He told David that, praise God. They filled that church or that sanctuary or whatever it was with every beautiful thing they could. King Solomon built a beautiful temple. And it was God's God was willing for this to be done. How many of you tonight know you've got to be willing? you got to get on the bus if you want to go with Jesus. How many of you know if you're going to build a church, you've got to get behind it with everything you got? But now this is the building that God will come into. He won't reside in it. Now I'm just be honest with you. When we all leave here tonight, God's going to leave. You think God wants to sit around here looking at a bunch of empty chairs and a pulpit and a microphone and a keyboard and a set of drums and what have you crazy? He don't need that and he don't want to stay here after we left. But the minute that door opens, whether we hear or not, and one person walks through, Sister Emma, then he's got a reason to come back. Praise God, because it's the person that he's interested in, not the building. He not only instructed Moses to make that so beautiful, but just think about what he did for us when we received the Holy Ghost. Second Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. He took the old filthy rags of Brother Netterville, and I'm not talking about real clothes. I'm talking about the filth that was around my heart and around my heart. They don't respect it. Have you ever bought a nice new coat? Sister Christy come in tonight wearing a jacket I've never seen her wear before. Nice, pretty red one. Now, if Sister Christy got something on it, she'd brush it off. She'd take it home and get it clean. 
If she had to, she'd put in the cleaner. <laughs> but some of us get a little dirt on our spiritual garment. And we don't want to seem to worry about it too much. Preach yeah. it. Some folks has had their conscience seared with a hot iron. Some folks look around and say, the church down the road is doing this, and the church up the road is doing that. And sister so-and-so said it was all right to do this, and brother so-and-so said it was all right to do that. But I'm here to tell you tonight, brother and sister so-and-so in the church up the road, in the church down the road, ain't going to take nobody to heaven. Hallelujah. It's going to be our Lord Jesus Christ. The temple was supposed to be a permanent place. And the first one was built by King David's son, King Solomon, to replace the portable sanctuary. As we go on down through biblical history, we see the last one when Jesus was alive. Praise God, built beautiful tabernacle built by Herod. But there was something wrong there. The Bible says that Jesus run out the money changers and said, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but ye are making it a den of robbers. Yeah. Yeah. Or den of thieves. Yeah. You think about it, wonder what they were robbing or what they was stealing. I know I talk a little bit about money, and we probably, some of us probably already think it, Brother Never, we're going to go back to tell us we've got to pay our tithes. But nope, I'm not. You already know that. But I'm going to tell you what we are stealing is our time with God in prayer. You have to have a spiritual relationship with Jesus Christ, you can't buy it no other way but by on your knees in a secret place somewhere. I preached here a while back about your secret place. I don't know how many of y'all developed one, but you need to get one if you ain't got one. Some of you need to get, my wife needs, she needs to get somewhere she can just pray the devil slap out of me without me hearing <laughs> Y'all laughing, but I'm telling you, you don't you don't pray everything you need to pray if somebody's got the ear tuned on you. I'm scared my little wife, Sister Brooke, might hear me if I say, God forgive her for what she does. Or my neighbor, Sister Nail, Sister uh, Gail might uh, she might get mad if she hears me pray uh, uh, that about her spirit. Come on, church. You need to get in your secret place. The biggest reason, I think it really hit your heart, because you need to be able to say, God, it's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. This is what I do, Lord. Not what my sister or my brother does, but it's what I do. It ain't what my wife does, but it's what I do. Would you pray in front of daddy and say everything that you do? <laughs> no, I know you wouldn't, sweetheart. And you know what? Brother Navy wouldn't play the sister Eunice and say everything that I do wrong either. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But when you get in your secret place yeah. where daddy can't hear you, and mama can't hear you. And grandma can't hear you. You begin to get to cry, Lord God, why did I do that in school today? Why did I say that the other day? Get your heart right. I'm going to hear tell you this time, you young people, get up off this view and live for God the way you ought to. I got up 67 years old. I can't jump around like 
I used to do, but y'all ought to be running around this building, jumping up and down, worshiping God like you never have before. If y'all scared somebody to see you on TV, I'll tell them to cut it off.
Praise the Lord. You know something? We talk about prayer. Even Jesus went to the temple to pray. He cast out them that sold therein and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. The tabernacle in the temple was where God came to meet with uh, humanity. He cho His chosen people and where they worshipped him and dwelt in a dwelling place in his church. You, you, did you, are you getting the drift why you need to worship when you come here? We don't, you know what? We do, and, and I don't stop because some of you look like you really need it. Brother Stewart does it. I don't stop it because some of you look like you really need it. But I'm here to tell you something, church. It's one thing for you to come in here and be too old to jump and run. But if you really love the Lord, you really worship Him. I don't care how old you get. After a while, the Spirit's going to get a hold to you, and something's going to take place. Besides a little hallelujah. A little da 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 I weigh 400 pounds. And sometimes I dance in the Spirit. You don't think that's for show. I hope to God you don't. Sometimes I feel like I can't get out of that chair, but there's other times when the Spirit of God gets on me, I just let it rip. Yes, Does the Spirit of God never get on you? You say what you want, but now I've been here a long time, 70 years. I know who does and who don't. And you know what? If I never felt God no more than it looks like some of you feel God, I'd be on my knees this altar saying, God, what in the world wrong with me? Matter of fact, I have done it, Sister Gail, because I just, I mean, I just didn't feel like things were right that week. I don't have to have somebody put my nose in the book and say, there it is. I read it and I say, uh-oh. Wow. Now I say, I forgot that was there. How many of you read the Bible all the way? Come on, church. Please read the Bible. The Word of God is powerful. Not to knock other people down, but to change your life. Without it, you won't never change. Right. I've seen people come to me and say, Lord, when they go pray for me, I need to change, I need to change, I need to change. And you pray your heart out, and you go home, you get on your knees, and you pray for them for days in and days out, and they come back to church and they change one of those. They didn't want to. Feels good to still be the same old person. Praise the Lord. Y'all know what? The Lord is going to come for long. Now, words are settled in heaven, the Bible tells me. There's going to be a book there. And if you do try to argue with him, which you're not going to be able to, he's going to get it out and remind you of things seen. Isaiah spoke of the importance of prayer as well as sacrifice in the temple. Listen to what he said in 56 and 7. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Praise the Lord. Now that's how the Old Testament.
Testament. And that was the Lord telling Isaiah to say that. But we have to have a conversation with God in order to know who he really is. I'll never forget one time Brother Don Taylor. I asked him. We, we was talking about we, I was in prayer and I felt impressed with God to call him on the phone. At that time he was still in New Road. And asked him, Brother Don, what do you think about me taking that church? And he said, Brother Nutterville, he said, you have one of the main ingredients, and he told me what that was. But he said, brother, he said, you need to fast and pray until you know who you are in the kingdom of God. How many can really lift your hands right now and say, I really know who I am in the kingdom of God? You need to find out today. You need to find out. You need to just fast and say, God, I don't know, but I need to know who I am in your kingdom. I need to know where I stand in your kingdom. It wasn't too long after praying this prayer that I was kneeling at one of these altars. I had done for some pastor this church. And I was praying. And I was thanking God because I, I thank God for a lot because he delivered me from cigarettes. I did. I, I thank him more times for that than anything else I guess I ever thanked him for. But I was here repeating that old thank you for delivering me from tobacco, Lord. And I'll never forget, I had a vision. This hand picked me up by my butcher's leg, by my heel. And it shook me just like that. And I began to see stuff fall out on the floor. And it had, each one had a little inscription wrote on it. Was it a hatred? Was it this? Was it that? Was it this? And I said, oh my God. Oh my God. See, I began to find out just who I was in the kingdom of God. Not very much. It seems a lot longer. But what happens is you get a desire to get rid of that kind of stuff. And you want to you want God's approval. You don't want to wait to that day that he said, Depart from me, you work of iniquity, for I never knew you. He laid you in. Well, Lord, I went to church all my life. Oh, yeah, I know you did. Some of you cast out devils in my name. But that don't mean much. I got news for y'all. Anybody can cast out a devil in Jesus' name. Anybody can pray for the sick in Jesus' name and they get healed. But that ain't who you are in God's kingdom. All you are is a messenger boy or a messenger girl. When you learn to humble yourself before God and say, Lord, that ain't nothing to me, then gifts of operation can begin to work in your, in your soul, in your spirit, in your body. And only then, you'll never do it. If you don't, if you don't get rid of all of the other junk, you can't, you'll never be used. And, and guess what? You know what? Y'all would be surprised at gifts that y'all have in your body right now. The Bible says he gave gifts to men, did he? Yep. Huh? Well, if you think all the gifts you got sitting on a pew saying praise the Lord, you wrong. There's all kind of gifts that you could be used in. I don't know what they are. I'm telling you, you need to find out what they are. You need to know where you at in the kingdom of God. Sunday. And, 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 and the Bible says God works in mysterious ways. But Sunday night, I believe it was, 
angeblich durch seine Power in action. But I mean, boy, I felt it in the Holy Ghost. I was ready to rip the pews up and pour the carpet and whatever. And that's just how much I felt. And you know what happened? Thank God, He showed us power in action. And He didn't, you know what I loved about it? He didn't use just me. He could have waited. I took the pulpit and said, okay, I'm a fireworks going to go up. I'm going to give it all to you. But he used Sister Jennifer. She started off. Then he used Brother Stewart. Then he used Brother Melville. I couldn't even preach my sermon. I knew I wasn't going to be able to. I folded the book. I, I, what I did neither. I opened it up and punched it up. And I think I asked Brother Stewart to read the the title to it. Because you had already seen God's power in action. You are God's power in action. Walking around every day of your life. Why won't you use it? Oh, I can't invite her to the church because she'll tell Oh, man, he's so handsome. I want him to be my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. I can't invite her because if I invite her, she's going to run to the boss. Did you know old sister needs no harm? Oh, church. Yeah. Oh, I, I bet I say too much. They'll fire me on the job. Let them fire. God will just leave you alone. That's right. That's right. Praise God. You can do things without getting fired, church, on the job. But I'm telling you right now, if, if, hey, let me tell you something. You might not do nothing, and the devil might try to get you fired. Yeah. If he even thinks you're thinking about it. Yes. But we are God's people. And you know what? You don't have to go out and tell nobody that. If you live for God, somebody else will tell you. I'll never forget. Oh boy, I, I just knew him on his job and had known him long. And he knew I was a Pentecostal preacher. Hornsby from Greensboro. Just a little guy our age. Played football for Greensboro. And uh, there was a colored preacher, and he was talking about his girlfriend. John Michael was going out and buying some truck. And he said, ain't that right, Greg? We all got girlfriends or something. I, I'm not really sure what he said. And this old boy spoke up and said, no, I don't believe it was him. No, I don't believe he does or something like that. He said, this man is a preacher, and he lives what he professes. See, I never told him that. Nobody else ever told him that. But they look and they see and they know. You know what kills me? When I read that scripture where it says the devil believes and trembles, I think all the saints of God who believe and they tremble so much they're scared to do anything. We're trying to build a church here. Church not one made with hands. But we're trying to build a church for God. Holy people that love God. And when we get on to the eternal place of my rest. He said, Isaiah said 28, 11, 12, for with a stone written an unknown tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Oh my God. And I think about some Pentecost today, and I think, my God, Lord, you have spoke to a stammering lips and other tongues. 
for cheer they will now be. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. A, dread, a dwelling place to rest in. The rest is in this part of the spiritual body. But in that day when we are raised up and called up to meet him in the air, we will be changed into a resting place that will never quit being blessed in the presence of Almighty God. My favorite scriptures in the Bible I know a lot of preachers got a lot of them, but this has got to be my favorite. John 14, 1, 2, 3, and he said, let your hearts not be troubled. And I think about it when I see the news. I said, oh, but my heart ain't going to be troubled because I believe in God. He said, be also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He never told me it wasn't so. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, Johnny, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. I don't know about you, but I'm waiting on that day. Yeah. You know, I've said a lot of times, I've talked about Dying and dying to his natural being born. And, and I, I've always got people say, Man, brother, you ain't going to die no way, sir. Well, they're right. <laughs> I ain't going to die no way soon. I ain't going to die no way a long time off because I ain't dying. You can, but I'm not. He said, I'm going to live forever. When I shut these eyes, yeah. And I quit breathing out this mouth. Now it doesn't mean that I'm not going to still be alive. Yeah. And this is the part I like too. Not as much as that scripture. But listen to what Revelation 21, 4 through 7 says. And God shall wipe away all fear from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Oh, aren't you wanting to build a dwelling place with him right now? And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done, for I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my God. Oh, what a dwelling place we'll have there. He'll be our God, and we will be his people. Yeah. Sister Melissa, would you come on? I want you to think about this tonight. Don't you want to make a dwelling place for the Lord? Don't you want to cleanse what you have here now the best you possibly can? I'm here to tell you God will come down and begin to work with you. But this ain't a one-time prayer meeting. It's got to be an everyday life thing. Yeah. You gotta want change every day of your life. You gotta go every morning when you get up and you gotta say, Lord, I gotta pray. Lord, I gotta read my Bible. Lord, I must do this or do that or be a witness somewhere. Yes. You gotta develop a desire. Yes. Amen. I love it, preacher. The Lord will give you the desire of your heart. Those desires is not, should not be a new shiny car. Those desires should be, Lord, let me reach for all my things. Lord, I want to walk 
in his place. And everybody there knows that I am a dwelling place for you. Would you stand in your feet tonight? Oh, Lord Jesus, we love you, Lord. Would you just stand around this altar and say, Lord, let me be a dwelling place. Lord, let me be a dwelling place. Open me up, Lord. Let me be the temple of the tabernacle, God. Oh, God, make me beautiful, Lord. Make me beautiful, dear God, that I might be what you want me to be. Oh, glory to the Lamb of God. Lord, we love you, Jesus. We worship you, oh, God. May you put us on the potter's wheel, Lord. Oh, God, make us anew again, Lord, that we might know your will, Lord.
Jesus.